You know what makes my balls itch? Isekai. I mean, at first it was cool and shit with dot hack and sword art and no game, no life. But then they just started making shit up, like that time I got reincarnated as a slime, restaurant to another fucking world because I'm an uncle who runs a weapon shop, and then we had 800 sword art sequels. It's clear the market's saturated with the same plotline where some skinny black-haired loser gets cracked with the truck and then is sucked into a brand new world. I'm OP, ha ha! Fuck off. And hey, the formula works, so why not keep doing it? I'll tell you why. I, for one, am sick of these <laughs> Nani ass <laughs> ass, <laughs> ass wimp-ass protagonists. Where's a man who appreciates a female form? A, a man who sticks up for what's right? Well, that's where Space Dandy comes in. And I fucked that line up. Space Dandy is a sci-fi comedy that follows the adventures of three intergalactic space hunter dipshits, Dandy, QT, and Meow. It's made by Shinichiro Watanabe, creator of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo. I'm gonna go through the five criteria that I'll be judging the show on. Story. Characters. Music. Art. Shit I don't like. I've done a lot of thinking and I've made my decision. You wanna be with Paul? Hey, Catherine. So does this mean... What? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Story. No racial, but I find a lot of Japanese humor just isn't fucking funny. Like, it just doesn't connect with me. Call me racist, but seeing a wimpy Japanese kid get slapped because some bitch walks in on him bathing or some shit for the 800th time just doesn't get a chuckle out of me, nor did it the first time. Space Dandy, on the other hand, breaks every trope in the book. The comedy fucking hits, and it hits almost every episode. You might not die laughing, but there's something inherently American about the show, as strange as that sounds. Just watch this clip and you'll know what I mean. It's together. Easier said than done, kid. I wanna die. What? For a long ass time, I'd even think Space Dandy was made in Japan. Like the dub alone is that good. And I know a lot of people have their gripes with watching Japanese shows in their non-native language. I myself tend to cringe at shitty dubs, but English is honestly the only way to watch Space Dandy. But besides a comedy, this show can make a 180 at any given moment, getting deeper than Jaden Smith's mind. I made a smile for you. I can't. Not now. How could I possibly smile after what you turned my friends into? I'll never be able to smile again, baby. And it's this duality that makes Space Dandy such a lovable and memorable series. There's genuinely heartwarming tearjerk episodes that don't feel forced in any way. The stories are told masterfully. It does have that signature Watanabe style where there seems to be almost no continuity between episodes. But I think with a series like Space Dandy, it just fits. It becomes ever more satisfying later in the series when they reveal exactly how much each episode is connected. But I'm not going to spoil that shit, just check it out. The series is great, I'm not going to say it's some Shakespearean masterpiece, but it's a show that knows exactly what it is and exactly when to get serious. The main character isn't invincible and faces very complex issues at times. I actually found myself getting really attached to the next category, and that is... Characters. Space Dandy does right with their characters that a lot of shows fuck up. They make it real hard to dislike someone. Seriously, as I was re-watching the series, I tried to find a character that pissed me off or just shouldn't be there and I couldn't do it. So first we have Dandy, obviously. He's a pompadoured asshole who I can really easily see myself in. He comes off as extremely human and organic, like he's some dude that actually exists somewhere. While he puts on this happy-go-lucky aura, we as the audience know there's other shit going on under the hood and it makes episodes with deep character development really stick. We have Meow. He's basically a fucking cat. We encounter Mia on accident, and he immediately becomes a part of the crew. Chill dude, likes boobies and that's good enough for me. Lastly there's QT. QT is a vacuum cleaner or something. He's basically the only slightly competent member on board. While I wasn't in love with this character or anything, the series definitely needed QT. I mean, he has his moments and I can't imagine the show without him. The main cast is great, but the little characters we encounter planet to planet and galaxy to galaxy almost steal the show. You grow attached with these aliens over the course of a single episode and grow to miss them as the series carries on. It's an incredible aspect of Space Dandy that I don't see a lot of shows replicating. I fell in love with at least three or four characters that made me wish they made reappearances later in the series.
art. I'm no artiste or anything. I can't paint, I can't fucking draw, I can't do any of that shit. So let me describe the artistic complexities as eloquently as I can. The show looks fucking good. In case you couldn't tell by the background, the team responsible for animating this show really put an incredible effort into creating a vibrant and overall beautiful universe. It goes from tatami galaxy levels of abstract beauty to dark and drab when necessary. One thing they do well is fluid motion. Shows like Black Clover come short when it comes to animating a believable movement. Dandy running, for example. When these characters move, you can feel it. I don't really have the vernacular to describe how well they did the music for the series, so just imagine the feeling of an orgasm but you can hear it, and then take some LSD and sit under a meteor shower, and you can still hear that. The tracks are memorable, catchy, and at times very atmospheric. This whole episode I've been playing music from the soundtrack, but that's barely scratching the surface. There's moments in the show that just fuck you up, which couldn't be accomplished with shitty music. Space Dandy seems to know exactly which song to play and exactly when to play it, so well that you can't help but notice how perfect they nail the atmosphere of each scene. There's anime with iconic music that elicits certain emotions every time you listen to it, like You Say Run from My Hero or that one song from Attack on Titan where the girl's just screaming at you. I think songs like Dandy and Love have a similar yet very distinct effect. Anyway, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, so let's wrap this up. So I suck flaccid cockin' balls at rewatching series. I mean, I couldn't finish rewatching Samurai Champloo, Cowboy Bebop, or even Daredevil season one, but I found myself at the edge of my toilet seat by watching Space Dandy again. Look, Space Dandy isn't for everybody, but it's for fucking everybody. It's an artistic marvel that can't be seen in an era of cookie cutter <laughs> nani anime we have today. I'm not saying every other anime looks and sounds like shit. I'm just saying Space Dandy tries a hell of a lot harder than most. Watanabe tells a compelling story through compelling characters and I honestly can't find anything wrong with the series. And if you're still on the fence about checking it out, give it the 3 episode rule. And if you're still not convinced, suck my fucking dick. So if you made it through, thanks for watching my first video. Subscribe and support black businesses, leave a like if you enjoyed. I have no friends and I'm scared of dying alone. Peace out guys.